Boy, what's going on today? I'm going to call this episode Supreme Stupidity. Supreme Court says it's not designed to solve every problem. And what are they going to do with Mrs. Barrett? Who knows? Who knows with these guys? I can't go after like Kavanaugh, so they're going to have to go after her faith. And now, of course, they're going to scream the Affordable Care Act, Roe versus Wade, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, of course, what else can they do? What else can they scream about? But before we get into that, let me suggest uh, really would help me out a lot. I'm a new podcaster, so any likes and subscri subscriptions, I would really, really appreciate. Hit that subscribe button and the like button and the notification button, if you would. I'm kind of new. I'm not going to ask for any money. I'm not going to ask for anything uh, from you except for your attention. And if you could hit that share button, that would be really great as well. So let's get into it. Let's see what's going on here. Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett in her opening statement on Monday to the Judicial Committee emphasized the role of the judicial branch and said it's not the court's due to solve every problem or wrong or right every wrong in American life. That is absolutely correct. Courts have a vital responsibility to enforce the law, which is crucial to a free society. The first of a four-day hearing on her nomination to the Supreme Court. But here's... She's right, but courts are not designed to solve every problem or, or right or wrong in our public life. Now, here's the part that that really gets to the meat of it, the substance of the court. She continued, the policy decisions and value judgments of government must be made by the political branches elected by and accountable to the people. Absolutely correct. Couldn't agree any more than that. That's why Supreme Court judges are picked for life. The political winds, which way they're blowing this year or next year or five years from now or ten years from now, do not matter. That is the point. The public should not expect the courts to do so and courts should not try. That's the problem with leftists and progressives. They use the court as extension of the legislative body, which is absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. They've always used the courts as a sledgehammer to push through their agenda to get things done that they couldn't done legislatively. That's kind of the point. They'll put through things that their representatives elected by the people you can't get them through because the American people, the vast, the majority of them anyway, do not want those things. Do not want those things. It was the content of Justice Scalia's reasoning that shaped me. His judicial philosophy was straightforward. A judge must apply the law as written. Not as the judge wishes it were. Judges aren't legislators. Progressives and leftists and a lot of Democrats, most of them, I'll never understand that premise. Never understand that premise. Sometimes that approach meant reaching results he did not like, referring to Justice Scalia, Barrett told senators. That's exactly correct. Republicans hoping to confirm Barrett, who was nominated by President Trump to fill the seat left by the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, to the nation's highest court before Election Day. Democrats have pressed the conservative judge where she stands on issues like abortion in the Affordable Care Act. That's not proper. It's not proper to ask what your legislative positions are on legislation. You have to see the case case by case. And, of course, Chuck Schumer, just to ruin our Sunday, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer called on Barrett to recuse herself from any cases involving the landmark health care law known as Obamacare, or the outcome of the November 3rd election. Well, we'll confirm you, but we get to pick and choose when you get to do your job. No, I don't think so, Chuck. Not at all. Absolutely. Uh, these people completely lost their minds. I know the Democrats were effed up before, but this is like, 
I, I mean, I don't know what's happened to them. Somebody ought to investigate what's going on. Is there different water maybe going into the offices of con- of the House of Representatives and the Democrat senators? Is there something in there that's affecting their brain? Nothing in your opening statement allays the concerns America has that she will overturn the Affordable Care Act and her people's health care, and she will act to undo Roe v. Wade. Go back and look at the Gorsuch hearings when they asked him about specific things. He goes, I can't answer. I haven't seen the case. My personal opinion is meaningless. I have to see what the law says and what the case says. Of course, that's what judges do. This nominee comes before us with serious conflicts of interest. Are you going to be kidding me, right? Yeah. Conflicts of interest with the progressive dogma. Either you think like us or you're out. That just, that's not very democratic at all. It's absolutely ridiculous. And we're here today to say that given Judge Barrett's conflict of interest, she should recuse herself. I repeat myself again. Barrett, a mother of seven, offered a glimpse in how she decides cases, saying she wants her decisions to be fairly reasoned and grounded. When I write an opinion resolving a case, I read every word from the perspective of the losing party. I asked myself, how would I view the decision if one of my children was the party I was ruling against? I kind of like that. that. That's excellent because she has seven children, two of them adopted, and they're getting on her case because, because she's white and dun, 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 two of the kids she adopted. The other five are hers naturally are non-white. Oh, my God. Giving an amazing life with an amazing mother, an amazing father, and amazing siblings, I guess isn't good enough. And, of course, most, most progressives and leftists think color first, color first, color first. They're not white, so they don't belong there. Who's the real racist here? It's really insane. And it's protections and decisions related to the election. Uh, excuse me, I lost my place here. Even though I would not like to resolve... What I understand that the decision was fairly reasoned ground in the law, Barrett said. Yeah, any rational person would. I believe Americans of all backgrounds deserve an independent Supreme Court that interprets our Constitution and laws as they were written. And I believe I can serve my country by playing that role, she said. If Republicans confirm Barrett, it would tilt the bench 6 3 in favor of conservatives. Yeah, on paper, maybe with the R's and D's in front of their names. But it really would be five and a half, three and a half. But, I mean, they're going to ask her about her about her religion or her. she's a very, very serious and devout Roman Catholic, as am I, and that's not why I'm saying that. I'm not devout at all, unfortunately. I wish I was as good as her. But I'll bet you if someone was sitting there with the Islamic faith and some of the Republicans were questioning how their Islamic faith would make their decisions based on that. The Democrats would be screaming foul. I am so sick of this. Two sets of rules. And then when those don't work, you change the rules again. And then next month, change the rules again and change the rules again. It's just absolute insanity. Absolute insanity. What this is really all about is affecting the November election for the president and a third of the senators that are up for re-election. By a weird coincidence, the vast majority of them are Republicans that are incumbents. In the next cycle, it'll be the other way around, two years from now. And that's just the way it goes. So they're going to go through this dog and pony show just to affect that. Oh, this evil woman is going to be taking away your health care? No, she won't. The chances of the Affordable Care Act and Roe versus Wade being overturned are damn near zero. I doubt if they're two percent. I doubt it. It's it's standard law. Roe v. Wade is the 1970s, and also Roe v. Wade was approved by the Supreme Court, if you remember. The only thing that changed was the individual mandate and the penalty for not getting into the have insurance or being in the Affordable Care Act. That's the only difference. These people are insane. Oh, there'll be back alley abortions again and blah, blah. The worst that could possibly happen if Roe v. Wade was overturned 
was not that abortion would be illegal. Not at all. It'd be up to the states to decide. Well, some states are backwards and some, oh, really? Why don't we apply that same logic to taxes? And where I live in New York, I live in upstate New York and California in some of the high tax states. They don't seem to complain about that. There's a huge difference between, we'll say, the state of Tennessee and Florida and the state taxes in New York and California. Florida and Tennessee don't have any. Well, you don't scream screaming unfairness because they're the ones receiving the money because they're run by liberal Democrats. I mean, this thing will go round and round and round and round. It'll make you insane. It'll make you insane. And that's the way it is, folks. And so we're going to have to see what this poor woman's going to have to bear. Today was only day one. There's four days of this. Ugh. I mean, the demagoguing that goes on is just incredible. Just incredible. I feel sorry for her, but you know what, though? This is a very coveted, very coveted seat. And she's more than qualified, highly qualified, even by left-leaning, very far left-leaning judicial uh, societies that qualify them as qualified, not qualified. She was all the way down the line, every single one, highly qualified. That's the only criteria that's necessary. The only criteria that's necessary. That's it. But we're going to go through this, and it's just... My God, my God. I mean, I'm not even part of this. I used to be part of local government. I was a council member for a few years back, for eight years. And I thought that was a pain in the behind. But you know what, though? This is worse. These people are crazy. But it's like having crazy family members. It's, it's our crazy. So we're going to have to live with it. So, folks, stay tuned. Until then, please, uh, please subscribe and please like. And please comment, even if you disagree with me. Uh, I a real comment that's not nasty, uh, just disagreements that are reasonable are more than welcome. And if you could share this video, I know it's longer, you can't share it on Twitter, but other social media platforms, if you could maybe leave the link on Twitter just to get to see what people think, I would really, really appreciate it. Well, until then, until the next time, thanks for listening. And as always, goodbye and good luck.